So we are back with another episode of Dan and David exactly. rambling <laughs> about random stuff. <laughs> Today's topic that we just had here in the studio, so we thought why not put on the camera, was timing in avant-garde or maybe fashion in general, but focus on avant-garde of course. Yeah. Where we had the discussion that the timing of Carpe Diem, the timing of Carol was really great. Even Paul Harden. Even Paul Harden was really great for their brands. That was the best time that those brands have started, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And then we had the discussion, would those concept, concepts work in today's world? What if yeah. Carol started now? Yeah. And yeah, it's such an interesting topic that we thought, okay, let's cut the discussion, put on a camera and then exactly. freestyle. Le le let's not uh, dive in too deep. Let's put the camera on and let's dive in deep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah interesting topic. I, I don't even know where to start. I, 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 think, I think an interesting point maybe to start is the fact that like when we talk about, about Carol and when we talk about like Carpe Diem and Maurizio and, and all those guys, I mean, that stuff is like at least 10, 15, even 20 years old. Yeah. And it's still relevant to a very niche audience. To me, the question arises, why is it so relevant? Why are Carpe Diem boots, like those, those uh, combat boots uh, from whatever many years ago, still relevant? I mean, I had them, they were too, too small, <laughs> I had to sell them. But the answer to me is that when I put them on, or when I tried to put them on, <laughs> um, it was, it was a piece that was so timeless, and I know timeless is such a buzzword today, which I hate, but those boots were so timeless and so well constructed that they lasted those 15 years and even probably overlast me in my lifetime, you know what I mean? And so I think that one point that could be made is that the the, the construction and the silhouette of those pieces, even even like CCP boots, is so iconic and so versatile and so and so timeless that it can be applied to so many different styles of clothing, but also so many different years where fashion developed in so many different niches, whether it be avant-garde, streetwear or whatever, you know what I mean? Obviously th those brands do something completely different today or Carpe Diem even doesn't really, I mean, it exists today, but yeah, we all know what I mean. <laughs> um, and even Carol does different stuff today, but those old products still have a big, big value. I mean, the boots I'm wearing today are from 2008. But I mean, longevity, okay. That's one point, but there, I don't know, people make cowboy boots the last hundred years. Good point. Before, before the Good point. Suit. So I think- is it, is it the silhouette? Because cowboy boots are also, I mean, I'm gonna use the term very lightly and often in this video, timeless. Cowboy boots are timeless. CCP boots are timeless because they are essentially in color 10, a black boot that works with many different styles. Is that the key to success of a certain product? More like for those two brands, what was new that they brought to, to the table was, I, th I think, the experimental approach. Good point. Good because point. at that point, there weren't many brands that really experimented yeah. a lot. And that's definitely something both brands did with, like whether it's burying leather in the ground or of course CCP has many different general experimentation. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that was kind of new. And then also, of course, the like handcrafted approach, which I don't know, I, I wasn't into fashion at that point. Yeah, of course. same, same, same. But I think that at this point, a lot of things were industrialized and yeah. like focused on mass production. Yeah. And those were the first brands that sort of open up a new genre with I think their so too. experimental artisanal approach, but, etc. But just to throw in the question, how do you think that Rick fits in all of this? Because Rick has been doing fashion since like the late 1980s, and Rick has always been experimental. But I think there's a big distinction between Carol and, and Carpe Diem and Rick Owens in the early 2000s. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, Even yeah. if Rick was extremely experimental, I mean, those those um, early on uh, men's heels that he did in like yeah. in the in the Scorpio season, like I think 2000, what was it, 2004, six? I really don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was so ahead of its time. And if you look back at today, where he's doing the kiss heels, yeah, it's yeah. basically the same thing. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I don't have an answer to that. That's so interesting. I, we literally don't have an answer to that discussion. To and that we question. didn't even talk about this yeah, topic yeah. for the whole uh, hours that, that we, we've been together today. You know what I mean? Like it's the first time where we, I, I think it's the first time where we even touch on fashion today. Yeah. Which is a new a new thing for us. So yeah, cheers yeah. to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's an interesting discussion. And then, so at the one, one hand, we have the point, what were the success factors for those brands in those years? Yeah. Would those brands work today if they started today? Yeah. I would say no, but... Absolutely. I would agree. But fashion now would be completely different. If Without those, those brands. brands. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it would have worked because nobody would have tried that approach so well. So, you know so I mean? let's reverse engineer that question. Why do you think that Rick is working so well today because I mean everybody who's watching this probably knows that Rick has been almost I wouldn't say forgotten in the past few years but he's been very niche in the past few years and ever since I would say 2019 2020 he's been very upfront in the mainstream of avant-garde fashion why do you think that is and why do you think Rick works extremely well now versus 20 years ago. I mean, he, he worked very well then. And yeah, I would actually disagree. So, oh, yeah. Well, I would agree. And disagree. And disagree. <laughs> so... Let's agree to disagree. I don't think Rick's work now is stronger Oh, than, exactly. No, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think why he has been more successful over the last two, three years or whatever is because all the rappers were Rick. And they pulled that stuff into But mainstream. is it just right? I, I mean, I would agree with that. But is it just right place, right time? Well, right time. He's been here for 20 years. And he, if, you, true. if you consistently deliver, yeah. somebody will see it. And eventually, it's a matter of time, I think, yeah. that a person who has a big audience appreciates what you're doing. He wears it. Yeah. And then you have all those teenagers wearing Rick. But yes. Doesn't, yeah, yeah. To I, me, I, that doesn't speak too much about his work. I've always yeah. loved Rick. Yeah, same, same, same. I've same. always thought that his work was strong, but I don't think his work is now like stronger than... Of course. Than no, I, I would agree. But the interesting thing is that he's been so present in the mainstream these past few years, ever since he's been doing um, very androgynous and very almost experimental works, as the, the Rick heels, all those super high shoulders, which aren't made for the mainstream population. Yeah. I mean, even ra like you said, I would agree that rappers today wear more Rick than for uh, the past 10 years or whatever. But even those Kiss heels, I think that when we look at every rapper that's relevant today, I don't think you'd be seeing I don't know, Quavo or 21 Savage wearing um, uh, those Kiss heels, but they're still the most popular item that Rick sells. I mean, they're always sold out. Mm. I honestly don't have an answer to that. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know either. I think it may be that in the past few years... Okay, let me, let me ask you a different yeah, yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. What if a new avant-garde brand shows up first season and they do those heels? Let's say two years ago. Yeah. Nobody would have bought them. You're probably right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not only agree. about the product idea. That product probably I, builds on the last 20 years as well. Exactly. And I think it's important to think about the fact that those heels, because we're talking about those heels essentially, those heels are extremely popular right now because they are Rick Owens heels. Because a lot of people associate the brand Rick Owens with those heels, with the idea of like this, this, this gothic glamour aesthetic, like this um, ACDC almost, this, this kiss aesthetic of the 70s, 80s. Yeah. And he kind of brought it back. And I would almost argue that there is 
no other brand that is bringing that aesthetic back like Rick has been doing. And and yeah, I think exactly maybe that's the answer. Them. Maybe maybe that's the answer because if you want to look like a Rick model, you have to buy Rick Owens. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no other way around it. Yeah. You you may be able to get away with like some crop trousers from whatever brand, but those heels and those super bold shoulders are just Rick Owens shoulders and heels. You know what I mean? That's an interesting talk. I think we're now diverging to a very different topic. I think so too, yeah. But I think it's still interesting, so let's freestyle. <laughs> I've never actually thought about this. If you want to look like a Rick Owens model or you appreciate the silhouette or whatever, yeah. you have to buy Rick. That's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. And I think that's a discussion we've had before. If you appreciate the CCP silhouette, for example, yeah. you, have, you can have the same silhouette without wearing CCP. I would agree. I would agree. You can buy tornadoes from Adi Chinove. Yeah. You can wear a deep deep blazer. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. And that's actually very very interesting. That's very interesting. Maybe that's yeah, a better yeah, topic. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I I think we 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 started with a different video where we are now. But yeah, that's a very interesting topic because a lot of avant-garde brands are doing the same silhouettes that are somewhat interchangeable. Whether it be Adichonove, whether it be uh, Deep D or CCP or whatever. But we have yeah. to make a distinction that I think it's important that nobody of you gets it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, interchangeable Deep D and CCP. Yeah. You have to, of course, consider that CC, uh, the Deep D was an integral part of CCP Absolutely. at some point. So it makes sense that the DNA is Absolutely. very close to each other. Yeah. And then, yes, Adichinova and uh, Carol have, have the same or similar pieces. Yeah. But then we also have to say that CCP was first. Absolutely. Absolutely. And maybe Rick was first also with a lot of things. Well, he's still the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is the interesting point, actually. Yeah. I think that there's a big distinction between those avant garde brands that do a very slim silhouette that can be achieved with an interchangeable amount of brands, whether that be Deep D, Layer Zero, CCP and whatever. And then there comes like those, I would say even those those um, almost elitist and A-tier avant-garde brands like, like Rick, like Yoji, like Comme des Garçons that have been doing this shit since like 30 years almost and they know what they're doing. And I maybe the answer is that Rick or I mean, I'm gonna stay on the topic of Rick because I think the OG has been doing the same thing for like 40 years, Comme des Garçons also. Rick has been doing the same thing for 30 years, but now he's cracked the code. He, he, he knows what the audience interesting, wants. Interesting, interesting. You know what I mean? And, and maybe that's also the question, that's also the reason, sorry, uh, why I don't feel as drawn to Rick as I felt like maybe four to five years ago, where I felt that he was like the underdog, but now he rules Fashion Week. Yeah. He He's the star of every Paris Fashion Week, you know what I mean? Yes, I mean, I've personally always respected his work, but I've never been drawn. I mean, I've always had Rick pieces, but not like the... No, same, same. Yeah. I, I've always had like those uh, those those skimp uh, uh, hoodies and those Ramones, but never those crazy pieces. Yeah, yeah. But you know why? Because the craftsmanship from Rick and from all those like experimental Rick pieces never really lived up to my expectations of craftsmanship. I mean, yeah, it's a different it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But when you say now Rick rules Fashion Week, yeah. That feels so good to me, even though I don't wear the Rick silhouette. Yeah. But it feels so liberating that people dare to try new stuff. And that's, I mean, you, you categorized his work. And I think there's also a combination of hyper futuristic yeah. stuff in there, which I would say I'm pretty liberal on how I dress and yeah. I, I try new stuff, but that's sometimes, that's too much. That's too much. Me. Yeah, same for me. But same I absolutely me. love that people 
appreciate I'm embracing that. Work. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And absolutely. are not too stiff with like, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely, absolutely. That feels so good. And absolutely. I think it's it's an important. This is bigger than avant garde. It opens up a new world. conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, You're and right. And this is also probably You're right. Perfect. The perfect segue. That's maybe in 20 years. Maybe we sit here and talk about Rick, how he opened up the space for new brands. We now talk about Capitino. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And that's also something like I, I said before in a video that we did. Like Skinosh wouldn't exist without Carol. Absolutely. Because. And, and I ex- probably wouldn't. Like my art wouldn't exist without the, all those avant-garde brands that taught me that the idea of something that is maybe abnormal or maybe if is even somewhat unorthodox can exist in the mainstream and yeah. i think that's what rick has achieved and now that's the question it. is why is it that like brands like ccp and paul harden and carpe diem and maybe even deep D at this point achieved this somewhat like cult status you know what i mean uh, because a lot of people gravitate towards those brands because they know that the craftsmanship is good, they know that the products will last a long time. But why is that? Is it just word of mouth? Is it just um, Instagram and, 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 and uh, outfit pictures and all this, yeah, mouth propaganda in a way? Well, I think those brands, they have been existing for many, many years. Yeah. And maybe Deep Dee not in her yeah, own yeah. brand, but sure. still their work exists for has been existing for many, many years in Carol's I, I think almost 10 years now. Yeah, yeah, but you mean Deep Tea only. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but her work before that 10 years was... Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 absolutely. Partially absolutely. her work, right? Absolutely. So, and that's again bring, brings us to the point that we actually opened up this video with. That was perfect timing for them. Yeah. And would, would this still work today? It's that's so a difficult. big question. And then the other topic is they paved the way for so many new designers yeah. that can only exist because they opened the doors. Absolutely. Right? You they know? did the hard work yeah. and said, listen, there is a... They had to have those conversations with buyers. Yeah, we buried a <laughs> leather hide for two years somewhere yeah. and now we make you a coat or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And they say, are, are you crazy? Are you crazy? And yeah, now yeah. all those experimental smaller brands can come up and have yeah. similar ideas, maybe yeah. not that extreme, but to, to some degree in that direction at least. Absolutely. And then the buyers know, yeah, well, that has been going on for 20 years, so it's okay. I know this works. Absolutely. And you know, I think, like you said, would this be, would this be still possible today um, with Instagram and with the internet, how it is today? I mean, I think the simple answer is no. Even someone like, like Carol wouldn't be able to exist today with the same philosophy that he did 20 years ago. And I'm, I'm, I, unfortunately, I well, think Well, he is way. existing. He is but existing, but he has the, the, the history yeah, behind him. Yeah. And I think the, the anomaly in that would be some, someone like uh, maybe Layer Zero or, or uh, John Skelton, who are almost driving this aesthetic forward while being very approachable. I liked it very much when I saw um, Skelton in, I think it was like a GQ or Vogue video where he explained a full outfit on YouTube and he was very forthcoming. He was very, he was very kind and, and he was very, he wasn't pretentious. He, he wanted you to get, like you the viewer, to understand his point of view and I mean, ultimately, of course, to buy the clothing. But I found it very, yeah, very yeah. Um, interesting and very sympathetic towards him, whether maybe someone who doesn't show themselves today would not have the privilege. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there are many facets to that discussion, right? Of, of course, of course. And the facet that we're touching on now is, okay, Carol never showed his face or his personality. That worked 20 years ago, yeah. worked for Magella. Yeah. We both agree this would never work today. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Because I but I, I, I shows... love that idea of yeah. not yeah, showing yeah, yeah, yourself. Yeah. Absolutely, me too, me too. But with the platforms that we have today, everybody's expecting yeah. 
a face behind yeah, and yeah. a story behind. Of course. Yeah. But I also love the idea that the products should be so strong that it doesn't really matter who the person behind that is. Yeah. Skeleton then really shows that there is a way of showing your face, being being there, being present, talking to his customers. Yeah. But in a good way. There is a fine line. Yeah. And this works. So maybe that's the way to go now. Yeah. But yeah, in in that perspective, like showing your face, those brands would not work today. Absolutely. And and I think you have to you have to almost make compromises where needed. I mean, someone like uh, Leon Emanuel Blanc who who is very approachable and who likes to talk about his own work is way more sympathetic and appeals to me more as a person as a, and as a brand as someone who is absolutely absent from his own brand wh whoever that might be you know what i mean yeah. so i think the the fine line is finding something that has not been done today or that can be done a different way today with the designer itself or whoever it might be explaining his work or her work and to stand up for her or his work where Paul Harden or CCP never had to do that because they had the connections and had the opportunity to fe to to feature their work in like uh, Achtung Mode or Vogue or whatever. But then also they didn't have the pressure because those platforms that all those people use now didn't exist back then. But do you do you do you really think they didn't have a pressure? Because I think even CCP did have a pressure. I mean, they they almost went bankrupt so many times. I mean, even the Gucci group thought about acquiring them and they said no. So I think the pressure was there. I think it was just a different kind of pressure. Well, my personal opinion has always been that he was always a rich kid and didn't experience pressure anyway but yeah that's a different different, a different topic. topic does that different video but yeah maybe maybe you're right i don't know but i think the more not maybe financial pressure but like the public expectation yeah right good point today it's it, think about founding a brand and not starting an instagram like there's literally that's crazy zero brands that that's crazy yeah, yeah 20 years ago there wasn't even that option so it would probably be easier you still have the pressure, probably because it, people expect to see the designer. Yeah. But then also when you think about what kind of relationships do you have to have when you own a brand? Yeah. Your main relationships are with buyers from stores. Of course. And they all met Carol. Yeah. Maybe. Where, where does that leave us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But still, I think the, the overall aesthetic of those brands, whether that be Carol, whether that be Paul Harden, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the picture of him in your studio, and all those other people, they have a very distinct aesthetic to them. They have a very distinct idea of what the brand should be. And I think one idea for success of whatever avant-garde brand it might be is absolutely a strong, brand identity. Deep Tea has it, Leia Zero has it, MA Cross has it, Taichi has it, so many other people have it. And I mean, I'm not here to speak on how much of their success is, very, is really validated or if they're really having success, but I see it as a customer and... But that's yeah. so interesting, let me, let me interject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's so interesting that and you bring up a good point. We don't actually know how successful those brands are. And yeah. we mention those brands because we think they're successful. Why do we think they're successful? Because they are listed in 10 stores. Yeah. Or a list of 10 stores. Yeah, yeah. which is nothing if you think about it. No. Like worldwide. But that's why you think, okay, Layer Zero is successful because yeah. they're listed there and there. Exactly. Which is so, it doesn't really say much. No, absolutely, absolutely. But. I still think that if you have your core customer and if you have your core styles of clothing, you can achieve some sort of, let's call it success, quote unquote. Um, I had this conversation, I think some time ago with a friend of mine, 
who said, well, like with Leon Emmanuel Blanc, um, I love his clothing. It, it's not for me, he said. It's not for me, but when does the point come where those buyers are tired of those super um, asymmetrical jackets and, and um, super weird fitting trousers that they just want to feel comfortable in their own clothing? Yeah. I, I don't think that point is gonna come because he and other brands like him have established such a core identity that you know when you want a leather jacket you, you, you have many options. The two options are, okay, I'm more of a Carol layer zero type of guy and I'm going towards the um, slim fitting leather jackets. Or I'm more of an experimental kind of guy and I'm going towards the Boris and, and Leon Emmanuel Blanc kind of road, you know what I mean? So I think every brand in that category has some sort of reasoning behind it. It's just interesting that one may appeal to us more than another. Is it is it just personal style at the end of the day? I actually wouldn't categorize those brands the same way that you do. Okay. Which is interesting. Did you put Layer Zero and Carol in one category? Yeah. And then Boris and Okay, let, let's say maybe Carol and Deep Deep. Yeah. And, and Boris and Leon, I, I would say... I mean, when you look at... Whatever. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I don't want to challenge you. No. But I think, okay, you have experimental leather jackets probably from all of those brands yeah i don't know too much about layer zero actually so maybe not layer zero yeah at least to my knowledge but yeah. carol has the most I, I, great boots i have to say great boots <laughs> yeah but yeah let me let me uh, go to a different uh, different point yeah and that's a discussion we've had before but it was quite a few months ago so still interesting and relevant to that topic yeah that carpe diem for example if we take yeah. that existed with many different stakeholders in yeah. there. Many entities. Entities. Most of them formed their own brands. Yeah. And the discussion that we had was whether those brands were successful because they were known from Carpe Diem. Yeah. And that's such an interesting conversation which, which goes the yeah. same direction as that topic, right? Yeah. Is a label under construction, is a M across, etc. Would they have reached the same level of success without Carpe Diem? I well, think, not, not only without yeah. Carpe Diem existing, but w without them being part of Carpe Diem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in the long run, they would have been quote unquote successful or at least known to us. But I think Carpe Diem helped a shit ton. They, they helped so much because at that time, even Carol, nobody was doing anything like Carpe Diem. Nobody was setting up their um, their showrooms like in, in some sort of street in Paris or in Rome or whatever and just hoping that somebody will come by, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously someone would come by because they had so many connections in the fashion industry. So I would say that someone like Amade or, or someone like uh, Labour on the Construction or whatever, they definitely profited from Carpe Diem the question now just is, are they still doing good work? And I think for the most part they are. I, 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 would, I would argue for the most part they are. I don't know how much of it is necessarily my style, but that's not the question. Yeah, yeah. But objectively, they are doing good work and they are selling quite well in every store, which we know of. So maybe the, the, the conclusion is that you almost need someone like a Carpe Diem or, or some sort of collaboration like, like ours <laughs> um, to launch an interest in both parties or, or many parties of that same brand. Because I've always been a very strong believer in the, in the Bauhaus idea. Bauhaus was a, an institution, an architectural institution um, in the late 1920s that worked because so many people worked within this institution. Yeah. Th there wasn't just Marcel Breuer, there was Walter Kropios and there were many, many others that worked yeah. in this institution. So I'm a big believer that everything that that is still relevant today came from a group idea. Okay, also, let me, let me ask Andrew you a question. Six. 
Yeah, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you think that at Carpe Diem, all those people involved were equals? Because honestly, I think it was... Well, I literally have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> this is just my personal opinion. Yeah. Disclaimer for the haters yeah, in the comments. Yeah, yeah. But I think it was 80% Maurizio. Well, not necessarily like the execution part. Yeah, but the idea but part. The, and maybe not even like the finer ideas or yeah. more specific ideas, but the foundational idea. And I think I'm, that's I'm it. sure it was. I mean, uh, Luca from Label Under Construction or Simone from Adichanove, hit us up. I mean, we'd love to have yeah. an interview. You know what I mean? So um, I, I, I would agree with that, that in every party, there's always some sort of a leader that everybody follows. But I don't think, at least for me, I don't think that that disqualifies the work of somebody no, else. No, no, absolutely. Exactly, not. exactly, exactly. No, no. That, that was not my point. And no, no, sure, sure, sure. Just, just I, for, I, for I the audience. So, so everybody knows we're somewhat neutral. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> always in every direction. <laughs> but now I think it's a diff, to me, that what's Carpe Diem is a difference. There's a difference between Carpe Diem, the project to me, to a collaborative effort. Yeah, absolutely. And even though probably it, at the end of the day it was, yeah, and it probably wouldn't have existed without individual stakeholders. Yeah, but yeah, it comes more from one direction, and then you have people like really going specific into the different categories. Absolutely, who have the best knowledge and expertise in that. Absolutely, but the foundational idea I think is more coming from. Not the group as a collective. That's at least my. No, no, no. I, I, I have no idea. I, I would agree. But do you think that Carpe Diem or the idea of Carpe Diem, this this working together, shaped the way for avant-garde fashion today? Yeah. Absolutely. Because because I, I would say 100 percent so. Well, that's the, why we're doing this video. That's true. <laughs> that's true. No, that's absolutely. True. That's true. It opened the doors, right? They they basically. Well, and I so there's say, always a value to Carpe Diem. That's, that's yeah, what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they basically opened the genre of avant-garde. Yeah, for sure. They're, they're the grandfather. Yeah. I mean, if, if Carol is the son, Maurizio is the grandfather, you know what I mean? And we're nephews. Very yeah, far yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're extended family. And the hated part. <laughs> That and never gets invites to the birthday parties. <laughs> and to the fashion shows. Yeah, so. <laughs> Let's talk about Paul Hahn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's also a discussion that we've, we've had for a while. It's like, okay, it's always the same silhouettes. Which is true. Which is absolutely true. We still love it though. Yeah. And my point has always been, why would he create new stuff? He creates stuff that was cr originally created hundreds of years ago. Yeah, the, like the, in that brand philosophy, it's it's against the brand philosophy to create new stuff. If you are absolutely, creating absolutely, old stuff, you you in know, your DNA, you, you know. know, it was very interesting. I was with with Solomon, shout out, at Harvey's in in Berlin, and they carry Paul Harden and Alan Dawson, and he told me that he he uh, is originally from a small village that's very near to uh, where Paul Harden grew up. And okay. if you go to that village, everybody dresses like those peasants in the mm -hmm. 1920s. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, not, not even in a bad way, not even negatively, but it's just the reality for that place. And so it is- They're all politically correct here. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and so it is imperative that someone who grew up in a certain area mm -hmm. just draws inspiration from those people. Yeah. And I mean, Paul Harden, he, he did his look so beautifully and so perfectly that there's almost no need to recreate it. And there's almost no need to discuss it because it's, I, w I would almost argue that, I mean, I'm going on a limb here. I would almost argue that Paul Harden is even more timeless than CCP. I said it. Yes, because at that time when he created or started creating his stuff, that was already past the time of the style. Yeah. You know? So time has no relevance yeah. for Paul Hart. Yeah, yeah. So by nature... And, and even trends. Yeah. Absolutely not. And that by, by nature, time or trends uh, don't, don't play a role. But let's talk about then Ella Dawson. Yeah. 
So I personally prefer Elena Smirnova. Me too, Paul actually. Harden. Me too. Like she was an integral part of Paul Harden or the brand Paul Harden rather than the person. Yeah. Well, you, you never know. Would she have existed without him? Well, could she have started her brand? Hmm, that's, that's a big topic. I think, I think it's almost the same with Deep DMCSP, you know? There's someone who gives the blueprint for a certain work and then you improve on it. But let me, well, yeah. let me interject. Yeah. Because nobody knows the role of Deep D at CCP. Yeah. Nobody knows the role of Elena and yeah. Paul. So, yes, you know, okay, Anna Dawson did the... What did she start again? I don't even know. I've, I really don't know. I think she started... I think Paul Hart did the shoes and then she started the clothing. The clothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Correct us if, I, if, if we're wrong. Yeah. You probably will. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's it's difficult to say they used that idea because maybe that idea came originally from yeah, them and yeah, they just brought yeah. it to their employer. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you want to call yeah, it that. Yeah, yeah. So that's something we, we will never have an answer to. That's true. But I personally think if, let's say, five years ago I went through Paris Fashion Week in like various showrooms, you yeah. see many different avant garde brands, many black clothing. I probably would have liked her work, and I'm, I'm the biggest fan. Same. But I think her work would, would not have made it to the stores Yeah. without the foundation, which is sad because I think the work is so strong that yeah. it deserves yeah, to yeah, be yeah, yeah. there. And I probably, as a consumer, would have never heard of her. Yeah. Because the only way, as a consumer, you can have access to those brands is via the stores. Absolutely, absolutely. And the stores, like, they have... I don't know, a gazillion different brands they are looking into. Yeah. Or maybe not even looking into because it's just too many. Yeah, yeah. So I think that definitely helps, right? If you, you have the connections, you know. You... Absolutely. Absolutely. And Which I... is good for her because I think her work deserves to be seen. Same, Same with Deep Deep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think one interesting question that may arise from that and that may also be like a good point to, to, to close the video is are there brands that may fall into one category or another but aren't backed by some other brands, you know what I mean? And that you find interesting, like maybe Ziggy Shen or, or Mud Point or whatever. Because there are, I think there are a lot of brands that deserve recognition that aren't getting that recognition because they just haven't, they, they just didn't have those contacts in the fashion world you know what i mean i think mark point does a very good job in that i think his designs are very very well made and quality is always on point and i think a lot of brands deserve it i, I even layer zero i have layer zero boots the quality is absolutely but they impeccable. didn't have layer zero connections to layer zero did have connections to altieri absolutely absolutely same with Taishi Murakami. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's actually difficult to find. Well, you have, yeah. you have Skelton. You have Skelton, you have those very obscure uh, um, Japanese uh, uh, brands like Petrosolam or, or Ematit that work in this very artisanal But they're way. hyper, hyper, like... Even, hyper niche, yeah. hyper niche, absolutely, hyper And that would be a different category for me. Hyper niche. And so... Maybe, maybe the last question is, who is someone who bridges that gap between hyper niche and accessibility? Maybe someone actually like Skelton or Deep D or Elena Dawson, even if they have the connection. You know what I mean? Matthias Winkler. Matthias Winkler might be a good, a good point. And I mean, for those brands, like when you land in Darklands. Yeah. Then, it's done. Then it's it's the end game. Yeah, then you have brands like Luminate Umbra, for example, who have had those connections or still have those connections yeah. to Carpe Diem. Yeah, yeah. They have been listed in Darklands. Yeah. But they are not listed there anymore. Yeah. And it, and it just moved on because that's just how yeah. life works. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I think, for example, Luminate Umbra is a, is a good example that one of those brands, their fabrics are insane yeah and i think they get overlooked i think so too and they have been around for ages yeah but they still get overlooked so i'm happy they are surviving yeah but i have no idea how they're doing yeah but i think they're 
work should be more more popular. Same, opinion. same, same. And I, I feel the same way with Layer Zero because I really love their design and I really love their shoes and I think the quality is excellent in that sense but I think they are somewhat getting overlooked yeah. and I think that's that's a good way to somewhat encapsulate this whole video because I, I it, it may seem that we are all that that we've been skeptical of avant-garde fashion for the last 20 minutes but we're not because we we love that segment of fashion yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think we both have so many smaller brands that we love and we support that are existing today so I think my top choices in that sense would actually be layer zero I love what Taichi is doing I, even if I haven't bought something from him know, I'm not the biggest Taichi fan yeah I, I, f I think I he, respect the work yeah. I love the mountain parker I've always wanted the mountain parker yeah never available in my size because I'm fat like that <laughs> but just out of like personal preference but I still absolutely respect Exactly, exactly, the exactly. That, and, that's what and I mean. similar to Layer Zero, I have not looked too much into Layer Zero because to me, there's too much stuff out there I that get what you excites mean. me yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. But I'm 100% convinced that the quality yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything is on yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Which brings us to the point of the last video is avant garde fashion dead. But we answered that in the last video. <laughs> check that out. Check we'll, that out. We'll yeah, it. exactly. So, yeah, let's close this video. I would say so. Do we have an answer? We don't know, but I think it's it has a been it has been a fun talk. Yeah, and maybe and you have the answer. Let exactly. us know down and, in the comments. Please only friendly comments this time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think even even super niche brands deserve way more respect than they are getting. And I think that's what what we are getting at because we have. CCP, we have Carpe Diem, we have Pollard, but there are so many smaller brands that are doing just as good of a work. Yeah. And I think we, it is our responsibility as like avant-garde fashion consumers, let's call it, to, um, to push those brands. Exactly. And let me, let me add to that point. Yeah. And that's the perfect uh, end of this video. Yeah. I think what you can do is, when we talk about is avant-garde fashion, that I think if you're watching this video, you want our avant-garde fashion to be alive. Yeah. So do we. Yeah. So I think if you are not willing to spend the money to buy those brands, you can still support them, follow them on Instagram. Exactly. Like them, share Repose their stuff. Repost and whatever. Exactly. And I think that's keeping the work alive, keeping Absolutely. people motivated. And I can just say from my perspective, like there are people who like every story that I post, repost stuff and I'm, with skin wash. Um, yeah, and I'm so happy with that, that people are supporting, even though they are not maybe buying stuff. Yeah, yeah, But it's sure. not about the money, it's about the support. And you exactly, feel like exactly. Motivated it's about the more. interaction and the human interaction. Yeah, and you see that people appreciate it. Because, because that's what avant-garde brands are about. Not the not the sales, but the human interaction. And I think that's, so I think that's the part. best conclusion that I can give. You can do your part, it's free. Speaking of free, like this video, subscribe, and <laughs> everything. <laughs> And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Cheers. Thank you so much. Until next time. Cheers.